Hey everybody, Giga was here with crazycoders.com. Uh, today I'll be showing you how to set up Squid in PFSense. Uh, it's very simple. This assumes you're going to have PFSense already installed. If you don't, uh, I've already created another video on how to install PFSense. I'll include a link in the description. You just go to that, watch it, follow along the steps. It's really easy. Uh, but anyway, let's get started. You're going to log into your admin interface. Uh, default username is admin and PFSense. Uh, I've changed it because you know, you're supposed to do that when you set up. Uh, so we're going to log into our control panel. This is the dashboard. As you can see, I've, I've customized my dashboard. But to start out, we're going to actually install Squid. So we're going to come over here to System, Packages. This is a list of installed packages. And as you see, I do have some stuff for Squid installed, but I do not have Squid installed. So we're going to click Available Packages. We're going to scroll down here until we get to S, because it's done by alphabetical order. I'm going to look for Squid. You don't want Squid 3 because that's beta. We just want Squid. Just click the plus button. When it asks you do you want to install, click OK. Just give it a second. It won't take that long. Okay, so we've installed Squid, so now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to Services and scroll down to Proxy Server. You're going to want to make sure it's listening on the LAN interface. Mine's already set, but if not, click Check LAN. Change any of the options you want. I left it default. Uh, I did want it to be a transparent proxy. We don't want anybody to know that, that they're behind a proxy. We just want them to go when it's done for them. Uh, I did enable logging. Um, I left the, the proxy port default as well as the host name and the email. It's up to you if you want to change that. Um, then, of course, you click Save. And you come over to Cache Management. And here is where you're going to set up your your basics. I'm sorry, my phone's going off. Your basics. Um, my I have a separate hard disk set up that's like 67 gigs total. So I, I allowed it 61, 62 gigs. This is where you'd say hello to laser this is where you would um, set up how much space you want the cache to use default I think is a hundred megabytes um, this is where you choose what storage system I left the default UFS um, the location is gonna be normally it's gonna be slash var slash squid slash cache um, like that uh, I have it as slash, nah, I think it was new drive, slash new disk, because that's where I mounted my second hard drive. Uh, the memory cache size, this is the amount of RAM that Squid is going to use to save things that are in transit. So, like, if you try to go to Google, it's going to save Google's image to the RAM at first so that it will serve it to you faster. And that's just the amount of space in megabytes to use from the RAM. I set it to a gig because my system has four gigs and I'm not even using half of it. So uh, this is the smallest, the, the minimum object size. Um, if you set a number here, anything smaller than that number will not be saved. So if you set it to 42 kilobytes and Google's logo is 41, then Google's logo won't be saved. Uh, this is the maximum size, maximum object size. Uh, and that basically means, you know, the, the biggest file that you can save on the hard drive in kilobytes. Uh, I set it to 512, which means about 512 megs is the biggest file I will cache. Um, this is the, the biggest size of the object in the RAM. So here again, Google's logo is being cached to the RAM. So if Google's logo is 33 kilobytes then it won't be saved in RAM it'll be saved to the disk first uh, this is the amount of sub the subdirectories you can change this to however many you want um, basically the higher the number the faster the caching but it'll slow down the startup of the service uh, the memory replacement policy basically just decides which objects 
are removed from the RAM when it's needed. Uh, I leave it as default. Uh, cache replacement, basically as it says in the description, it decides which object will remain in cache. Uh, and which ones will be deleted to, to cache other items. So if you're full on disk space, uh, Squid will delete Google's logo in favor of YouTube's logo. Um, the watermark in percentage, basically it replaces cache when the swap usage is at X amount of per X percent. So in this case, if it's at 90% swap usage, it's going to start clearing stuff and it's up and if it's up at 95 it'll start really trying to clear stuff and get rid of it uh, do not cache basically this is a list of domains or IP addresses you don't want to save in the squid cache so for example I have Proxmox running in my local network on 192.168.1.159 I don't want to cache that because I send a lot of ISOs there and I really don't want to cache 5 gig objects each time uh, I put speed tests there as well uh, both in its regular and it's www form just because you really don't want to cache speed test file when you're trying to test your internet speed uh, and the offline mode will basically it won't try to validate the cache objects it just downloads it and that's it now you're gonna click save and that's it now you have squid set up so your web pages will all be cached for example if we go to we're gonna go to Google Now this stuff, the images load for, load into cache and load from cache. And okay, so that was your basic setup of Squid. Uh, I'll probably go into a more detailed setup of Squid later on. And I've got a few more videos to set up about PFSense and the things that are included with them. Uh, and we'll get into that later. So this has been a video by GigaWiz of CrazyCoders.com. I hope everybody enjoyed. Subscribe and have a great day.